we come to the uh, keynote address of this uh, session and uh, dr uh, manreet kaur who is uh, an assistant professor at uh, rp center and has authored uh, two books on refractive surgery and smile uh, along with uh, dr titial sir is here to be ta talking on uh, refractive lenticule exchange extraction the way forward A very good morning to all of you. So I'll be talking about refractive lenticule extraction. Is it the way forward? No financial disclosures. So we have seen the evolution of refractive surgery along the years from incisional surgery to surface ablation to flap-based corneal ablation, spacicals. And now refractive lenticule extraction is the latest procedure in the foray. And it was first described in 2007 and received FDA approval in 2016. So what exactly is small incision lenticular extraction? As we all know and we have heard over the past one and a half hours, it's a femtosecond laser-assisted intrastromal refractive lenticular extraction. And now it's approved for a myopia of minus 1 to minus 10 diopters and up to 3 diopters of cylinder. So it's a fairly simple procedure that involves femtosecond laser application to create the lenticular bed, lenticular side cut, followed by a cap cut and a cap side cut. And it's a fast procedure, 25 to 30 seconds, and then the lenticule is extracted. Conventionally, the anterior plane is dissected first, followed by the posterior plane, and then the lenticule can be extracted via a small 2 to 4 mm side cut incision. The side cut size decreases with increasing surgeon experience, and you don't even need a forceps with time to extract the lenticule. Even when you're dissecting, you can take it out and then just extract it from there. So looks easy high, and is it better than LASIK? Ocular surface stability we have seen is much better. There is a lesser damage to the subbasal nerves and faster recovery of the corneal innervation, less post-operative dry eyes. So maybe a better choice for patients who have mild ocular surface disorders preoperatively but are still motivated to undergo refractive procedure. Then coming to the biomechanical stability, the vertical transaction of collagen lamella in strong anterior and peripheral stroma as seen with the flap-based procedures is not there with SMILE. So it is theoretically superior biomechanical stability is seen. However, ectasia has still been reported in cases of SMILE, though less than LASIK. Long-term outcomes we'll know in the next decades. The disadvantage, there is still a learning curve with SMILE as in LASIK we have a dictum of C1, do one and teach one does not really hold true for SMILE. There is a surgically challenging learning curve with majority of complications observed in the initial few cases including side cut extension and tear, cap tear, suction loss, opaque bubble layer. So the main Complication during femtosecond laser application is suction loss, which can be observed at different steps, the lenticule, si uh, cap, uh, lenticule cut or the cap cut, cap side cut. So when you have the suction loss during the lenticule cut, as in the case shown above, you have to abandon the procedure and convert into a surface ablation or a flap based. During cap cut, cap side cut, lenticle side cut, you can redock and restart the procedure from the same uh, point at which the loss occurred. And we have an algorithm for the management of suction loss. So now we are fairly confident in managing suction loss in different uh, stages. Then coming to the lenticle dissection part, the main complication observed is a cap lenticular adhesion wherein you inadvertently dissect the posterior plane first and have a host of complications because of that retained lenticule, delayed visual recovery, cap and side cut tears, posterior stromal damage, epithelial defect, irregular astigmatism. So now we have various techniques to manage cap lenticular adhesion. ASOCT we have seen is a useful tool to identify that you have indeed gone into a posterior plane at the anterior plane, the cap, the lenticule is stuck to the overlying cap and then you can use a Sinsky hook to just nudge off the lenticule from the overlying cap and then take it out, peel it off and extract it via the same side cut. 
and double crescenting edge separation has been uh, described by us for the management of cap lenticular adhesion in smile in which you can separate the lenticle from the overlying cap from both the edges and separate it till the midline then take it out because when you are doing the anterior plane later and peeling of the lenticle manually there is always a chance that you extend the side cut or induce a cap tear so slowly peeling off from both edges decreases these risks then stepwise management algorithm has been described by us for the difficult identification of correct dissection place in smile so now we are so confident that if we have a cap lenticular adhesion as in this case we just go in with a sharp instrument and just nudge off the lenticle from the overlying cap where it is stuck and extend the separation plane to the site of the side cut and then you can introduce a dissector in the anterior plane and the rest of the dissection is near normal and you can in fact in this case we ended up extracting the lenticle via the same side cut incision without even using a forceps or trying to peel off doing a lenticular excess sort of maneuver so with time we have managed to overcome these complications that were initially seen as challenges in smile so patient selection as dr rupal also pointed out is very important especially if you are uh, starting out with refractive lenticle extraction and you should choose patients with thicker lenticles so a moderate to high refractive error and more cooperative no deep set eyes so prevention of course is better than cure and meniscus sign has been described by us to prevent lenticular misdissection in which you separate an anterior lamellar channel then a posterior lamellar channel and you see a meniscus shaped sign at the site of cap side cut and this indicates if the instrument is above or below microscope integrated optical coherence tomography has emerged as a useful tool to aid in on table real time assessment of the planes however it is still not integrated in the um, uh, smile machine so way to go so other challenges we have are hyperopia astigmatism and retreatment hyperopia we are still awaiting fda approval a donut shaped lenticle with large transition zones are being attempted astigmatism methods for cyclotorsion com compensation have been described including limbal marking calistoi systems retreatment as dr ritika nicely covered circle pattern thin pla plastic and surface ablation can be done so is it really the way forward the outcomes with in terms of visual acuity both smile and femtosecond lasik are comparable smile has advantages over femtosecond lasik in terms of post operative corrected distance visual acuity in meta analysis and less induced aberrations newer companies are jumping into the foray and there are new femtosecond laser platforms for refractive lenticle extraction including we are now having the visumax 800 which takes care of the cyclotorsion and has an inbuilt centration system decreases the laser cut time so suction loss should further decrease then we have zimer machine femto ldv z8 laser and schwind is also coming up with a new machine so yes smile is definitely the way forward and this is our work on smile and the current refractive surgery concepts and i would like to acknowledge my mentor professor jeevan s titial so who has smilingly shown me the way over the years thank you